Welcome back. This is still Tea Time and we are definitely celebrating independence and focusing on how the entertainment industry has evolved. Right now we are focusing on Nollywood and to see how far they have come and I tell you it is very interesting. Of course we have a guest to discuss this but before that let's see this quick report um, before we get into the conversation. The Nigerian film industry is largely dynamic, keeps evolving, and is much older than Nollywood. Before the birth of Nollywood, history holds dear to heart. Filmmakers like Hubert Ogunde, Tunde Kelani, Ola Balogu, Moses Olaiya, and Eddie Uguma. Tunde Kelani shares what it was like to be a filmmaker at the time and how they found inspiration. I found inspiration, you know, from the community itself, from the environment, and then I started reading, you know, there was quite a lot of books around. It started in Dio Fagua, all the saga of the Dio, of the Dio Fagua, you know, books, all the five books. And then I went, um, discovered the Yoruba Traveling Theater. And I'm one of the few people who have seen Kola Ogumola live on stage in the Pawan Card. And then I got into London Film School at the time when uh, Star Wars, Jojoka's Star Wars, in fact, it started with Stanley Kubrick's 2001 Space Odyssey. It freaked me out completely. And then, of course, Spielberg came with Cruise Encounters of the Third Kind. And, and then uh, Star Wars, uh, you know, came. And at this time, I thought, wow, this was the end of the world, only to realize that it was just actually the beginning. So. My inspiration came for, has come from everywhere. Nollywood may not be where we hope or expect it to be, but it is a general consensus that Nollywood industry has done very well, albeit with much room for improvement. As we celebrate 59 years as a country, the Nollywood industry is roughly half that age as the production of the all-time classic home video, Living in Bondage, has been pegged the watershed of Nollywood. Some industry players share with us the happenings leading to Nollywood. I think Nollywood was an accident of, of um, nature, if I use that. So the Americans would call it a freak accident, but this was a good freak accident, as it were. In the early 90s, there were very strategic and important independent producers. Independent producers removed from the Nigerian Television Authority production um, circle, because then, you know, in the 80s we had a lot of um, um, programs from NTA, which was the sole network then. And there were not many private, there were not private television stations at all at that time. So there was a monopoly by NTA. So a, a lot of the productions then, New Masquerade, Hotel, um, Samanja, a whole lot of them, they were done from the NTA production um, structure. I am not sure there is any other single individual that has influenced Nollywood more than Amaka Igwe. A lot of the people who work now were at one time or the other a student. She believed that um, she would say when something stands, something stands with it. She had always felt that we all could benefit from a bigger industry if we left our little comfort zones, comfort places, so to speak, and thought more in terms of the bigger picture. You know, what do I do that makes it easier for the next person to do whatever he or she needs to do? And she was, that's the kind of person she was. And she started pretty early. She was 24 years old when she created Checkmate. So we began to see independent producers coming on NTA network and producing and um, putting their programs. Those programs give a fresh verve to um, the, 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 the drama series and the telemovies. NTA sort of brought a policy, I think, in 1991 or 91, late 91 or mid 91, which, um, because NTA was commercialized by the then Babangida um, government, they commercialized NTA. So NTA in, in um, coming out as a commercialized venture said producers should start paying for airtime. That's not done anywhere in the world. You can pay for airtime. In those days, the NTA would have would commission a show and give you like 12 episodes for it to work as a weekly. If it doesn't work, they will cancel it. So there were a lot of people on the line at the NTA waiting. So they stopped. It meant, and they stopped because they started importing telenovelas, which were cheaper and made them more money. So they stopped. 
That meant that there were a lot of people outside who had scripts that could not be produced. There were actors and directors who didn't have work. There was a void for a long time. So the audience, I was used to watching Checkmate, I was used to watching their favorite stars from those independent productions. They were yearning for something. They didn't see all those guys. They didn't see the RMDs, the um, Ramsey Noirs, the Liz Bensings and all that. So when Okechuku Ogunjofo had this idea within that same period to say, let's go and shoot something, living in bondage. And he partnered with Kenneth Nibwe and that movie came out in 92. The movie sold like wildfire because there was natural a hunger the audience was waiting to see something and they saw something on home video and a whole lot of vhs tapes were all over the place too as well in homes that was how the home video industry was better because there was a lull from television and that by that freak accident and experiment that void was filled and then after that everybody started saying you know we can actually do home videos how far has Nollywood come? What has changed? And what are the things that are constant? I think Nollywood has done a phenomenal job. I think that Nollywood is in a very interesting place right now. I think that um, potentially Nollywood is, is underachieving. Um, I think that Nollywood could, be, could easily be 10, 20, 50 times bigger than it currently is. And that's not um, refusing to acknowledge the growth that has happened, say, over the past six, seven years. You know, we're a lot better now. Um, we have um, the better manpower, better cameras, better um, directorial um, or perspective to storytelling, uh, to to filming, to directing, um, actors have improved greatly. And um, there's a whole lot. And the market uh, value is, is even a lot better. We're getting more um, international recognition. People are trying to collaborate with us from outside the shores of Africa and beyond. Africa and Nigeria is said to be a sea of untold stories. We have so much stories to tell, and Nollywood brings the opportunity to share our culture with the world. Nollywood is currently contributing over 5% of Nigeria's GDP. What do we expect from the industry between the next 5 to 10 years? We need to have our own film village. We need a whole acre of land to begin to erect what we need to sell. Look, this industry contributes a whole lot. The work we need to do, even if we did it at the best of our abilities, will take us at least a decade. The work we need to do. Nollywood's value. Oftentimes, we are still too apologetic about Nollywood. When we talk to foreigners about Nollywood, it's only Nigerians I hear speak about Nollywood to foreigners the way we speak about Nollywood, almost as if we are apologizing for it. Meanwhile, travel for a film festival featuring Nollywood. Everyone is wondering how we are doing it at all. We have been inducted into the Oscars. Um, I mean, I am a member of the Nigerian Oscar Selection Committee, as it were, and amongst 11 of, with 11 of my colleagues. Um, we are getting more into the global mainstream politics of filmmaking. Um, we're beginning to understand that there is a market, a huge market in the diaspora that we have not explored. I do think in 10 years' time, um, a couple of Nigerian films would have won Oscars. Yes, we're going to see more and more high-quality Nigerian movies that can receive international attention and that will receive international attention. It's already happening. In five to 10 years from now, we're going to see a lot more of it happening. Nigeria is 59. Industry practitioners have had to fight tooth and nail to establish the industry with next to nothing support from the government. However, as the country marches towards its 60th anniversary, the current governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria has recognized contributions of the creative sector to the economy, hence committed to invest 200 billion naira to the sector. For Nollywood to achieve its potential, we need to put structure behind it. And by structure, I don't mean the federal government spending X amount of money in this fund or that fund. That's not structural. Expectation is that this disbursement of this fund, if done properly, should help to further strengthen the industry. 
Elsie Godwin reporting for Plus TV Africa. Welcome back. So that was the report put together for this conversation. And of course, to have this conversation with us is someone on that report, Deyemi Okolawa. He's a Nollywood actor. And someone I like to call a creative entrepreneur too. And a marketer. Welcome, welcome. Thank welcome. you for being here. Welcome to the show. I Thank have you. one very quick question for yeah, Deyemi. When Charles said that um, Nollywood is an uh, accident I, of nature, right. it's like you it's don't a freak have accident. With that. Well... I understand what he's trying to say. Um, um, I, I, I wouldn't necessarily use the same words, right? I think, I think again, and he explained it after he said freak of nature, mm -hmm. he explained it, and I agree with the explanation. Okay. You know, when he said that there was a void, and Nollywood came to fill that void. And really, uh, in the business world, that's what happens. You bring out a product that the consumers want because they lack that kind of product you know, in the market. So. Um, Nollywood makes perfect sense. It was going to happen. It has to happen, um, and it has to it has to get better, really. All right. What caught my attention the most was when um, Tunde Kelani was speaking, right? And um, he mentioned what motivated him to get into the industry. He said he, there were lots of books he used to read, yes. like the Far From Wa mm -hmm. and yes. all of that. Now, but what do you think is happening to the reading culture in Nigeria and do you think that is affecting the stereotype in movies we see nowadays the same storyline people do not explore they do not think deeper they just see everything on the surface do you think if we read more then we'll be able to create more I, I think generally as a nation um, if if we get more books to people and people actually read these books mm -hmm. we will see a lot of improvement across board um, I personally have believed in my, Look, the reason why I'm in this industry is because I used to read a lot of storybooks as a child. Mm. You know, all the Annie Blightons. Mm. Uh, and I grew up to start reading uh, uh, the, bigger, the bigger books, uh, John Grisham, Sidney mm. Sheldon, you know. And my imagination was sparked from there. And that's, that's where my storytelling ability, you know, even as an actor, comes mm. from all those books and the movies that I watched. So, yes, the more exposed we are to ideas outside of our environment, oh, which is what books... Yeah, which is what books really do. They just mm -hmm. exp expose you to other thoughts, other perspectives, other environments without necessarily having to go there or meet these mm -hmm. people. Yeah, so it would definitely be an improvement. Okay, um, do you agree that Nollywood have more manpower now, like enough? Um, so in terms of quantity or in terms of quality? Because quality. <laughs> <laughs> no, because so you say we have more, more manpower but they're lesser quality? Mm. I wouldn't say lesser quality. I'm, mm. I'm, I'm more interested in seeing um, people improve on their skill sets. You know, mm. um, as an actor, I read books on writing, screenwriting. I read books on directing, light, sound. Remember the conversation we mm -hmm. just had? Uh, light, sound. I try to understand everything that goes on on set so that I can be my best as an actor. Um, and I think that is something that we need to focus on. And we talked about, uh, and I know you probably would ask this question later, but uh, Chris uh, Ihedaro mm -hmm. said that instead of government providing funds to the industry the way they have in the past, mm -hmm. what we should be looking at is infrastructural development. Sure. Um, and so in this light, um, one of the things that we need to set in place is training. You know, training, um, investing in training institutes mm. for Nollywood. Uh, there are a few scattered ones around, um, but to actually have institutes where people are trained in every aspect of production mm -hmm. and properly trained for this environment, going on YouTube you know, helps, but it's just not enough. Traveling to the States or to another country to learn mm -hmm. filmmaking mm -hmm. from that side, eh, it has its advantages, but again, it's not for this environment. So sure. um, we need to start to develop our film philosophy and build institutes where we can train people, you know, to make this industry better. Now, so, let's talk about the genres of movies, because um, these days we only see the same old, it's a love story, it's a drama, it's a comedy. That's what we see. Now, I've always been advocating that right now we should start seeing other genres, such as horror, mm -hmm. science fiction. Do you think that we have people that are actually capable of doing all that now? And is Nigeria, is the Nollywood industry ripe for other genres? Or are we, how long are we going to continue seeing the same thing? Okay, so the question I would ask in return is, where do you go to watch Nollywood content? Because that might be the problem. Um, mm. I go to film festivals. Mm. I go to gatherings of filmmakers. Mm. Um, aside from cinema and TV and maybe the VOD platforms mm. where I consume Nollywood films. Uh, so if you've focused on certain 
You see, you see those certain places yes. you go to, how yeah. many of us or how many people out there are privileged enough to be in those gatherings? So the, the other, now, which of those ones you see in those festivals yeah. make it to the mainstream? The other side of it is what is the commercial value of these movies? And that's not a result of the filmmakers, it's the result of the audience. Yeah. What are you going to pay for? Mm. Are you going to pay for drama? Are you going to pay for comedy? Or are you going to pay for horror? or sci-fi because if there's no demand for what you what you um, what I'm producing then there's no there's no commercial value to it and if, if there's no commercial value to it I'm not going to show it to you I go to where I get some kind of reward if if it's a film festival that's going to reward me um, for creating a horror movie or a sci-fi movie then fine I, I personally have there was a comic con recently mm. and I was in three productions two of them got shown at the comic con one was an uh, animation by Ant Hill Studios, Nia Kimalaya. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic, Malaika, you know, fantastic work. Um, so animation, which is another genre mm -hmm. that, you know, we, mm -hmm. we never really focus on. Uh, and people loved it. There was another movie um, produced by Accelerate TV, which um, was called Rise of the Saints. Mm -hmm. And I was, you know, I featured in that movie. It's a movie, but it has a lot of um, sci not, well, tech type stuff, yeah. right? Um, special effects and things. And it was really good. Uh, and so that was also at Comic-Con. And the people who saw it appreciated it. Now, because I work between, you know, the production side and the distribution side, I'm able to now say to people like Malaika, I say, look, I think there might be some kind of commercial value in this movie. Why don't we bring it to cinemas? They might not even think about it naturally because they don't know. Nobody has done exactly. it. Exactly. Same thing with Rise of the Saints. There's a chance that it might come to cinema, you know, because... Um, my level of influence has increased from just being an actor <coughs> to being on the distribution side of things. Okay, let's talk about reward you mentioned earlier. So um, I know some of the producers are making money now from their movies. You see some gross 200 million, 400 million and all that. So I want to find out if this um, reward is being evenly distributed and can an actor say he or she is going to live solely on acting? Evenly distributed amongst producers or amongst the film industry? Amongst the film industry. Um, I think, <laughs> I would say, I would say that from my experience, it is quite possible to live solely, very comfortably, even flamboyantly, as an, if you're so, an if you're so in inclined as an actor in Nollywood. Right? Wow. Yes. From my experience. But you know a lot of people don't agree with that. Well, then they don't know. Because mm. I know. Are you surviving solely in Nollywood? Okay, so for the past six, well, maybe say five years, I have survived solely on Nollywood because I wanted to concentrate on that while I understood the industry. Okay? And as I learned that, I began to expand my circle of influence. So I'm into film marketing as a result of my past mm -hmm. corporate experience in marketing um, and distribution. So I now work um, as head of distribution for Nollywood and international independent movies mm -hmm. at Silverbird Film Distribution. Uh, and I took that position not necessarily because of the paycheck, but because of the passion, passion. that I have mm -hmm. for the industry. Now, acting at Nollywood made me comfortable enough with my investments from, you know, from my proceeds from there to take on this position. Mm -hmm. So I'm, I'm okay. Hmm. I'm okay, of course but, you again, but again, but <laughs> no, no, no. It's, but again, it's it was it's never really about for me. It's never really about the money. Mm. It's about how much impact. So even as an actor, I really just want to do something great. You, the money will come. Now I'm doing this. I want to see more Nollywood movies succeed at cinemas. And you're talking about cinema numbers, so we're going to that. Um, there are a lot of movies that are, there are a few movies that are making money. A lot of Nollywood movies are not making money at the mm. cinemas. Okay. At the cinemas. Um, and that's a, that's a really, really key and strategic platform where producers can make money. Well, primarily because the Nigerian audience uh, doesn't have a high enough level of confidence in Nigerian movies mm. at the cinema. Mm. And we can point fingers whichever way we want to point fingers, but the truth is that things are getting better. A lot of producers are now, a few producers are now doing, you know, films that people believe in and trust you know they built a brand that whenever you hear this person is doing a movie you're like yeah you know what i want to go watch that movie mm. um and and that happens that needs to happen more and less movies that that um turn away people from nigerian movies at mm. the cinemas need to stop coming to cinemas okay um 
Nollywood industry, I, I, in my personal opinion, I think they don't tell our story. I mean, our cultural stories. There are so many stories that people don't know, and I think if they put into a movie, it would attract a lot of people. Why do you think we don't like to tell our stories and we wait for um, foreigners to come and tell those stories for us? Yeah, it's the same reason why you're here and you think you have stories, but you've never taken your money to go and invest yes. in a movie or write down that story. You have enough money to invest well, in write, a movie. Or write or write that story down and get somebody to write a script and then pitch it to somebody who has the money. We are always waiting for somebody else to do the job. The people who are telling the stories that we are watching right now mm. are telling stories that they want to see and they want to tell. Okay? So anybody who has an issue with the kind of stories that we're telling needs to put their money where their mouth is. Mm. Get sit down, write a script. When I wasn't getting the kind of scripts that I liked to to you know to be involved in, I went. I read five books on screenwriting, and I started writing the kind of stories that I want. Mm. Okay, and and so that's I, I I'm I'm a firm believer in you want something, you want to see something done, you're gonna have to do it yourself. Do it yourself. Sure. Yes, and this is this goes to everyone out there who has something to say about Hollywood stories. Please, mm? I used to work in corporate. I well, we never. cannot all leave our, our space. Oh, yeah, I was going to say that. Do you so want everybody you, to stop their then, job? Then you have, have to, you have to endure what you get. It's, it's what I did. <laughs> no, that's yeah, actually, you are actually, to be actually, a screenwriter yes. or a Nollywood yeah. producer. Mm -hmm. or, I mean, talking that's about telling our story, I don't think she's the first person raising that. Even yes. people, key players in the industry, have had forums and they talk about, mm -hmm. oh, we need to tell our stories more. Is our story just I mean, about, if you're... I think our story doesn't end at having I think, I think two telling wives. our story. It doesn't end at um, whatever we see every time. It still goes back to... Wedding party. Was that our story? Of course, that's our story. Mm. King mm. of Boys. Is that our story? That's our story. Um, Chief, Daddy. Chief Daddy. What's that our story? Do we have issues like... Uh, yeah, so what is but Shango? This, the story we're talking about is Shango, about party, is party, yeah, party, party, party. Which what now, are you, what I'm talking... What are you watching? You, I'm talking about... Where wedding are you? Party. Chief Daddy. Mm -hmm. Okay, King she's talking about our cultural history. I'm talking about cultural yeah, history. Yeah, I think she's I'm referring just, to the yeah, I'm not just talking Shango about um, parties, 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 because right. most of these stories just talk about the flamboyant life we live. I mean... Which we live. Yeah. yeah. That's it's just the only... Story. What is our that's story? Just what, that's just the only... I feel like that's just the only what do you part want to our concentration. What do you want to say? The cultural, um, our cultural, our cultural story. Heritage. Yeah. Yes. Like what? Her, her heroes. Songo, uh, I want to be able to watch oh, yeah. a movie and learn something about the Edo history. Exactly. Right. Because I know they have a rich cultural uh, history. So Lancelot right. Imasue wrote something uh, a few years ago uh, called, um, I think... Uh, figurine? No, not Figurine. 18, is it 1831 or something? A movie by Lancelot Imasue. I can't remember the name of the movie, but... Um, yeah, it was about that. So, what other story do you want to It was about that. Shongo, there was a movie okay, maybe yeah. about Shongo. Let's take it back ago. to how we market our movies. Because yeah. I know I've had Yeah, this because I was going to talk about distribution okay. since right. um, that's your space now. Now, do you <laughs> think that our. <laughs> no, you know, let me, let me. Let's finish this. No, real quick, real quick. Mm. Okay. That's why I'm saying that. Look, you also have to realize that if we're going to tell these stories at the level mm. that we want to tell it, we need a lot of money. It's easier for me to write a story that is centered around these times. Mm -hmm. You know, where, where am I going to go? need to travel. Where am I going to, to where do I need, do you, do you know how much, research. how many millions of dollars are required? If you want me to do a Game of Thrones in Nigeria, that, that's a level that people are mm. used to. We all watch Game of Thrones. Mm. So if I'm going to do an epic Nigerian movie, it better be Game of Thrones level. It better be that good. Or else the same people are saying, you're not telling our stories well. <laughs> if I do Shango now, nah, that Shango get K leg. <laughs> <laughs> They should so just stick to part you. Know, this this investment. So, investments, structural investments, infra making sure that our structures are, are set in place, infrastructure is right. Um, and then people can contribute and tell whatever kind of story you want to tell, you know, mm. and, and we'll be okay. good. I want to focus on distribution, distribution. because um, while we were talking to Yinka Davis about the music evolution, she said, oh, there are a lot of people that put their hard and money into and they're not carrying people along. That's why they're doing this. That's why they're doing right. that. Now, if our movies are properly distributed right. within our country and not just focusing on um, the international space, which is more like what we're all focused on, because I think we need to start from home, yeah. develop our own variety at first before we start doing the Oscars. I saw Charles Novia talking about being inducted into the Oscars, but how much relevance do we put into distributing our own movies besides 
do you know the cabals, the people that are actually in control, they don't even let you put your movies in the cinemas. They're like, oh, it's not up to the standard. But no. are they up to the standard? Mm. <laughs> they but I see some movies in the cinemas. And, and, and I'm I see like, no. a lot of movies in the cinemas that are not up to standard mm. either. It, hold on, hold on. Um, okay, I get what you're saying. Do you understand? You see, when you, whenever people, especially Nigerians, mm -hmm. talk about cabal, I get worried. But you know there are people controlling the system. Let's be honest. Controlling what system? There's really no cabal. There's nobody controlling stuff. And I can tell you this because I'm in there, so I know. I'm in there now, so I know. Um, but you're there, I mean. It's really about. <laughs> <laughs> but you're there, I mean. <laughs> so. I don't know what that means. Maybe you're um, one of them. But uh, I mean, come on. <laughs> you're you're controlling the as system. An, as an actor. Uh, and the truth is, you see, it, it, your film lives or dies you know, by the merit. Mm. You merit of the quality of your movie, mm. you know, the relatability of the story, mm. and all those really, really good stuff. It's never about anybody trying to stifle anything. Okay, but quickly, what would you like to see moving forward? Because our time is up. I'd like to see us have a lot more cinema screens around the country. Mm. Um, that would go a long way. I think we should focus more on building an, a, a, a nationwide market before we start looking outwards and you know, looking to other platforms, interna international platforms, to help us. Uh, I think there's a huge deficit in terms of cinema space in Nigeria. Uh, we might not have to have the complex cinema, those huge mm. ones. You know, community cinemas might work. I think we should try that out across the country. That way, you know, we're able to recoup our investments, you know, and avoid, because we've tried to avoid piracy by going into the DVD market. Mm. Um, so one of the best ways to make money from your movie right now, you know, is in cinemas in Nigeria. And that's one major thing. Uh, so talking about infrastructure, that's one of the things that I think we need to focus on as an industry. All right, Outside thank you of Lagos. So much <laughs> for your time. Thank you. And um, that's how we wrap up on this segment. Definitely our independence edition live podcast will continue right after this. Thank you.